Hi guys, my name is Jude, and this is the third time I try to dye my hair purple, and this is the third time that I fail, apparently. It looks more black than purple, and I am done. I am done. Purple hair is not for me. Today I am here to go through my favorite shelf on Goodreads, my, my favorite shelf which is usually the featured shelf on almost every single profile and um, I already made a favorites video but I wanted to make one based off of my Goodreads shelf because I haven't updated that in a long while so I have some weird books here and I, I want to show them to you I haven't gone through all the list by myself yet because I saw them and I was like oh my god I forgot about that book I used to love that book and I wanted to go through them on camera and just go back through memory lane and I don't want this to be like super long so I'll just get to it and yeah let's let's get it going so opening up my Goodreads shelf first I have a Forbidden by Tavita Susuma which you already know that I love and I have and I talked about it more in depth in my favorites video which I linked down below by the way so that you can check it out Next I have Cut by Patricia McCormick. Cut is forever one of those books that's, go that's going to stay with me. It's not really like a, a novel in, this, in the term that it's like interesting or fascinating or whatnot. It's more just real and raw and it's about the story of a girl that's going through recovery. So um, it's basically about her time in recovery and in therapy and such. But it's not like exciting, there's no romance, there's no action or big revelation. It's not like an Ellen Hopkins novel, like intense. No, it's just very quiet and it's all about recovery. So it's great, great, great for anyone that's dealing with any type of self-harm issue or would like to know more about the subject in a very realistic way. So I highly suggest you check it out if you're interested in that. Next I have Shadow and Bone by Leith Bardugo, the Grisha Trilogy book 1. It was such a great fantasy book. I haven't continued with the series even though I have it. I have the whole series right here actually. Need to get to it. I love that book. I don't know why it didn't continue if I have them. The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight by Jennifer E. Smith. The only book by Jennifer E. Smith that I apparently liked because I loved that book. I thought it was so sweet, so nice, and it was like a breath of fresh air. I read it in one day and it's a lot about family and stuff and it was really cute. But I, I kept re reading other things that she wrote and I just wasn't into it. So sad. But that book is great. I highly recommend it for winter season by the way. The Night Suckers by Erin Morgenstern. Oh my god. Oh my god. One of the best books ever. So whimsical, so magical. Talked about it already. Oh my god. I have a review for it. Oh my god. I love that book so much. Go read it if you haven't. And if you pick it up and you don't like it right away or don't feel like captured by it, it's not gonna get better. I'll just say that. Going to Far by Jennifer Eccles, one of my all-time favorite romances. I actually just received a comment like a couple of videos ago where someone asked for a recommendation on a good romance that wasn't cheesy. That's the book for you. This is the book for you. This book is so great and amazing in terms of love story and plot and whatnot and it's not cheesy. Next, Take Me There by Carly Dean. I didn't remember that book. I love that book. It's about a guy named Dylan that has a criminal record and he's dealing with life and all the hardships that, that, that go through it and his dad is a criminal also and, and he's in prison and Dylan doesn't know what to do with his life but then he meets a girl and she knows what to do her, with her life and they both complement each other and they're trying to get through with life. It actually reminds me a lot of Perfect Chemistry by Simone Elkalist, you know, with the bad boy and the good girl but take me there, it's at a much more deep level and how it, I actually think that story would happen, not in like a super like hot romance, forbidden love kind of thing. This one is on a much more serious note, so if you like Perfect Chemistry but you would like to read something a little bit more realistic and darker, definitely take me there. It's for you and it's beautiful and poetic. I remember that there was a lot of poetry in there, it was great. 20 Boy Summer by Sarah Oakler. Sarah Oakler was in my list of autobi authors. That book was so great. 20 Boy Summer, it's a story about two girls that go on vacations to California and they basically say that they're going to hook up with 20 guys during their vacations. It sounds like a chick flick thing, like super light and just like a flirty story. It's not. It is such a misleading title and idea because that book shattered me two pieces because it was so so uh, 
it's a really tough book on your emotions. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. I loved it, but it, it, it will shatter your heart to pieces. 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. Oh, that book is a classic. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure most of you guys know about it, but if you don't, 13 Reasons Why, it's a story about a girl named Hannah who kills herself, but she leaves behind some tapes in which she explains the 13 reasons why she killed herself. And she basically just leaves it there for people to listen to the people that were involved in her suicide. Like right off the bat, it's rough. Um, I love that novel. It, it is, the, the, the whole topic of suicide, it's really hard to like grasp and read through, but the whole writing style is so easy and effortless. So it's a great novel, but it's definitely a downer. You will get depressed a little bit at least. It makes you feel a lot, which I love about it. Incarnate by Jodi Meadow, big favorite of mine from a long time, at least in the paranormal area of things. I have a review for it, also linked down below. The Rules for Disappearing by Ashley Elston. I didn't remember that I loved that book. That sounds awful. I remember the plot and I remember why I love it, but I didn't remember it like before. It's because I don't have a copy of it, probably. Um, but yeah, it was a great book. Um, I really liked it. It was like such a fun time. It's about a girl that, um, there's weird things happening in her family and they move and things are getting kind of mysterious and weird but then there's this sort of stalker guy mystery kind of thing going on and there's murder and there's this and that it's a great mystery book i really enjoyed it for what it was just a good fun time it was a great book the reckoning by kelly armstrong which is the third book in the darkest power series i love that series i loved it so much if you like paranormal and and you want something refreshing, cool and adventurous and just a fun time, highly recommend this series. It's so great. This is not a test by Courtney Summers. I love that book so much. Next, Slammed by Colleen Hoover. Oh my god, Slammed was the first novel that I read by Colleen Hoover. It's so great. If you haven't read Colleen Hoover before, Definitely start with Slam. It's her lightest novel because other novels get into heavier topics and it's like mm. But Slam, it's her lightest novel even though it does deal with hard topics But um, yes, definitely always start with Slam. I have Clockwork Angel and Clockwork Prince from The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clear. The Infernal Devices was 10 times better than The Mortal Instruments, I'm just saying. And Clockwork Prince was my favorite of them all. I mean, Clockwork Angel was great, but Clockwork Prince was ooh. Wake by Every Martina, highly recommended. It. It's the best indie book ever. First Comes Love by Katie Kavinsky. It's one of my all time favorite love stories, also. I don't think it's that, um, cheesy it's a bit cliche in certain things but not too cheesy i highly recommend that the, the cover looks like freakingly epic romance titanic kind of thing it's thought it's so great and it helps you grow a lot i love it next along for the ride by sarah Dessen. it's my favorite sarah Dessen novel sarah Dessen is the queen of contemporary i can't say no more it's my favorite novel of hers painted blind by michelle a hansen painted blind is a great novel it's so weird because I actually think the summary and everything is pretty misleading in terms of what it actually is about. Painted Blind is all about Greek mythology and it's such a great epic adventure of sorts but it is about Greek mythology. Just keep that in mind. If you're into that, you will love Painted Blind because it was such a wild ride and ugh, I loved it. It was crazy but I, I thought I was getting into some contemporary novel with a little bit of paranormal in there. It's not. It's it's about the Greek gods. Next, Sea Change by Amy Friedman. I love that book. Um, sea Change is about mermen and mermaids and it's more of a mystery book with mermaids in it because it's about this girl called Miranda that goes to spend her summer in this little Iceland and she meets a boy that's kind of mysterious and apparently he's a merman but they never actually tell you <laughs> during the whole novel. There's just all of these weird events happening all around the Iceland and things and stuff, but you never actually get explained anything. I, I really thought there was going to be a sequel, but Amy Friedman never wrote anything else, so I don't know, I just really liked it for what it was. Sometimes It Happens by Lauren Barnhold. It's the story about a girl named Hannah who falls in love with her best friend's boyfriend. That's the main plot. Um, 
and it really goes into what how your actions can hurt somebody else and and you know it's a very typical plot i think like falling in love with your best friend's boyfriend it's kind of a common theme around YA novels and it's usually just like shut as something like you're an awful person and you're bad and you're a terrible human being but the whole novel it's just such an eye opener into how these things can happen and how sometimes it happens sometimes it just happens you fall in love with someone you weren't meant to you do things that you wouldn't ever thought you would do and it doesn't make you a bad person so i loved that about the novel it's one of my all-time favorites it really questions your morals and makes you re rethink how you re it makes you restructure how you think so i loved that Entwined by Heather Dixon, it's a retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses, which is the tale that I grew up knowing, and if you like that tale, this is a great retelling. It's my favorite retelling. It's actually my favorite retelling, retelling of all time. Yes, highly recommend it. It's just a fun and lovely fairy tale. The Sky is Everywhere by Dandy Nelson. Mm, I cried a lot with that book. <sighs> Yeah, it's a great contemporary book if you if you're looking for something that's just deep and and heartbreaking and just a good book. The Sky Is Everywhere by Jenny Nelson. It's a great pick. Helpless by Colleen Hoover. Oh, that's my favorite novel of Colleen Hoover so far, and it's also the closest to my experiences in life. And it was very dark, and I I cried like I had never cried before, and I had to go to therapy to work through the issues that. These, this book brought up brought out of me so so it was a wild ride stay by Diff Coletti it's the only Diff Coletti book I've read but it's also one of my all-time favorite books of all time it's about an abusive relationship and I think that every single person girl boy like at the age of 16 17 should read this book everyone Shiver by Maggie Steve Otter Shiver I loved it's the first book in the Wolves of Mercy Fall series I really liked Shiver. I thought it was a great book. The ending was a bit left open, but I still thought that I could complete it easily in my head, and I loved it. And then I found out that there were sequels, and I was like, what? And with the reviews of said sequels and what, what I heard they were about, I was like, no. No. And I've never continued with the series. I just love Shiver and I will treat it as a standalone forever in my head because they say that the sequels are not that good. So Shiver will forever stay as a standalone in my head. I will never ever continue with the series, but I loved Shiver. And I think you should read it as a standalone. Intertwined by Jenna Showalter. I didn't, I didn't remember that book. I went to the house of my bestie Elaine and I saw the book there and I was like, looks interesting, can I borrow it? And she said, yes and I loved it it's a paranormal book vampires and stuff um, but it was so different from all the other paranormal that I've read and I think it's quite an under it's really underrated and it's really great so if you've read a lot of paranormal and you really like it I think this book is great for you because it's so fun and original also in many aspects point of retreat by Colleen Hula which is the second book in the slam series it was Great, I won't talk much about it because no spoilers, but it is told from the perspective of the guy, this book. But it's like, it's like the sequel, but now told from the guy's perspective. It's not the same novel. Just saying, it was great. Easy by Tamara Weber. Oh my god, Easy, I love. It's my favorite new adult book. I mean, I love Colleen Hoover, but Easy was just so fun and easy to read. <laughs> and I really liked it. I really liked it. I highly recommend it. It's just such a great new adult romance. Highly recommended. Will Grayson, Will Grayson by John Green and David Levinson. Will Grayson, Will Grayson was so great. I love it. So many people don't like it, and I don't know why. I don't. If you can get your hands on the audiobook, do it. It's the funniest, best audiobook I've ever listened to, and I do listen to audiobooks quite frequently. So I really, really suggest you give it a chance. I love it. I, I, I adore. It's my favorite book of John Green. 
I think it's the only book I've read of John Green. And last, I have Burned by PC Increasing Cast uh, from the House of Night series. It was book number seven. Funny enough, a lot of people didn't like that book. It's their least favorite book in the series. But during the whole House of Night series, the main protagonist, Zoe, is always just so strong and so kick butt and she's taking down the evil guys and the, the good guys and the bad guys and whatnot and still dealing with teenage drama in the middle of all of it. And you can see that she starts off like so strong and like, yeah, I can take down the bad guys. I will do what my destiny says I'm supposed to do. But as the novels go on, she begins to uh, waver a little bit, you know, like be a bit more hesitant. And she feels like her strength is falling and her hope, she's everything, which is normal. It's one thing that always drives me nuts about epic adventures like, I don't know, The Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter where, where the characters are just so convinced of their quest that they'll do anything for it. They like waver a little bit, but just like a little bit and then they're back on track and I hate that. Burned was the one vulnerable book in the series. Zoe just lost her shit. She basically zoned out and practically died. <laughs> and it's about how she started trying to get back her faith and I absolutely loved this book. It's all about the internal battle and the internal struggle. It's the best book in the series and also the last book I read in the series because book 8 I didn't like and I stopped and I gave up. And that's it! That was the last book on my favorite shelf. I definitely need to update this and remove some of them. So yeah, that, that's what I have on Goodreads. I did. Do let me know what you have on your Goodreads shelf, like link it down below. I think you can link them now, right? Yeah, just link it down below and I will go and check it out and see like what we have in common and stuff. I, I, mean, I assume most of you use Goodreads, I hope. But if you don't, it's like the Facebook for book lovers, <laughs> just so you know. It was really fun going through them and just seeing which books I've liked all throughout my reading years and yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope this wasn't like a, a really long video. I've been recording for 20 minutes, so I, I will see how this ends up being short. Uh. But do let me know what some of your favorite books are. As I said, your links to your favorite shelf if you have one. If not, just mention your favorite down in the comments. And if you've heard of the books that I mentioned here, I would love to know. I will also be linking like right here to my favorites video, which is a book in which I talk about seven books that are my current all-time favorites right now. So definitely, if you would like to know about more in depth about my actual favorites currently, you can click right here. That's not to say I do not love the books that I've mentioned in this video. I love all of them. But here I talk more in depth of the ones that I currently love at my age of 22. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!